when you look at Ocado overall, uh, one of the things that we've been imp- tremendously impressed with Tim and his whole team are the progress they continue to make. So if you look at Ocado five years ago and you look at it today, it's a completely different organization. And everything that you see, they continue to just push themselves to keep getting better and better. And what they do is incredibly important. They have, you know, they use technology to be massively uh, efficient from picking an order, from connecting with a customer standpoint. And for us, uh, it was a, you know, Tim and his team is a, uh, what, a 19 or 20 year journey that was an overnight success. Because the last year, obviously, what was last year, congratulations on being the number one stock performer on the FTSE. Um, But it's all those things that we got so excited about Okado and Tim and the whole team. And we just felt like even if we could do it remotely as well as Okado, it would take five or ten years to get to where they are, not to where they're going. And it just made a lot more sense uh, to partner with Tim and the team. Look, our key was that we'd spent 19 years learning, investing, and innovating, um, but we live on a little island. And so we wanted to deploy that that innovation, that IP around the world, and do that with the best partners. And the best partners, obviously, are people with strong customer business, strong ethics, but also big ambition, um, big footprints, uh, lots of customers, uh, lots of products. Um, And, you know, the, the U.S.'s largest supermarket was clearly the number one choice for us in the U.S., as well as the ambition of Rodney and his team to win in e-commerce in the US. I think their ambition is very clear. Uh, It was clearly stated to us, and I think it's very clearly stated to the outside world. And so we think that putting the strengths of Kroger together with the strengths of Ocado and the innovation that we'll both bring and will be added to by our other customers over the coming years will mean that they should become the number one player in e-commerce in the US. What we did uniquely in our space over the 19 years was not just do the best customer service in the UK, but was to do it with the best economics at the same time. And normally you choose between one or the other. You're normally the expensive operator who does a good job, or you're the discount you know, one who's got the cheap economics. But the application of the technology that we've you know, innovated and deployed has allowed us to do both. And what's been the learning curve, uh, would you say, um, this, thus far? Well, to me, it's, you know, I look at it, and Tim may have a different perspective, but it's no different. It's the same as a marriage. And uh, we're all in. We're all in with Ocado, and it's incredibly important. And that doesn't mean every single day is beautiful, but at the end of the day, you have so much respect for each other, uh, and you're continually communicating and understanding because you understand that neither neither party can get to where it needs to be without the other. Yep. And uh, and the the respect for. Tim and his team and, you know, the values and all those things are just impeccable. Yeah. We have, uh, we're partnered with Bonpreu in uh, Catalonia. We're partnered with um, Cru Casino in France, uh, Sobeys in Canada, um, Ica in Sweden, uh, Kroger, uh, and uh, Coles in Australia at the moment. So part of this, though, is that the learnings from Australia will benefit the customer in Monroe, uh, um, will benefit the customer in Florida. Um, the learnings in Florida will benefit the customer in Paris. And so part of what we're bringing is to players that don't have a full global footprint, which in retail nobody really does, is a full global footprint so that the learnings from those markets and the developments in those markets will take global. So we're not running, we're running one platform. So if we innovate something in the Australian market, it will be available to all the customers in the US if Kroger decide to turn the flag on and make it available. So we're not forking the code and running a bunch of different businesses. They're all customized for the retailer, how the retailer wants it to look, how the retailer wants it to feel, how the retailer wants it to work. But the underlying engines will be there, uh, whatever we innovate for everybody. And so the relationships are slightly different, but in, in, in all of them, they're all structured in a partnership style where we invest as the customer launches and we will succeed and make money uh, if the customer succeeds and grows to be the successful dominant player in their market. Look, I think we're in a slightly different place than many in that a lot of the first wave of people that you thought were technology companies were actually people that were in their existing industry, say retailers, who were deploying a lot of technology and therefore doing it differently. We went a stage deeper than that and actually you know, we've developed that technology. So 
We probably have the largest robotics team in the UK. We're about 1,300 strong in software development, just focused on this kind of narrow field of groceries. Um, our, our core strength, I think, is our ability to innovate and constantly challenge ourselves and never be satisfied with the results. So we never hit our targets. It's not because we always miss our targets, but it's because as we get close to our targets, we just move the target. Right? And so, you know, if we, say, if we set ourselves a goal of 180, when we're at 170, we move it to 200. When we're at 190, we move it to 220. And we just keep driving change. But we also, within our business, organize ourselves to make incremental change and to make kind of moonshot change as well. And then we've also got, you know, people that are doing change using IP that we've invented to, do to deploy in completely other fields as well. So we've got an enormous amount of activity going on to ensure that we are the innovator that's going to change our market and hopefully other markets as well, um, but always with an eye to what's going on. And because we've got the strength of innovation capability that we have, if we see something that we like, then obviously we can, you know, we can emulate and advance on it, uh, even if we didn't always have the first, you know, every idea out there. Yeah. 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 The other benefit both of us have is immediate customer feedback. Right. And the customers are not shy about giving you immediate <laughs> feedback. And sometimes that feedback are things that you've done right, but other things, it's what you need to get yeah. better at. Yeah. And you've got to be humble enough to use it. Yeah. Yeah. And that was one of the reasons that we liked about Ocado is most technology companies are just technology companies, and Ocado is a retailer and a technology yeah. company. Yeah. We're focused on our partners' customers, on how can we deliver solutions for our partners that will make our partners' customers' lives better. And uh, you know, we think we can deploy a lot of of clever tech behind that, whether it's machine learning or AI or robotics, that, that's where we believe our core skills. We, we spent 19 years doing this when everybody thought no one had an interest. And so we've, we've gained a lot of experience, a lot of experiments, and a, and a lot of skills. And we're just gonna keep expanding that. And every time we've done something that's moved our business to another level, where we could have had the opportunity to take cash out, to start paying dividends and kind of cash out, we've done the opposite, we've actually gone more, more innovation, more R&D, more investment, and we'll just carry on doing that.